Hi everybody, welcome to All Games New and Old. I am David Rodriguez and today we're going to be reviewing Cypress. This is a game that's coming to Kickstarter in April 2022 and it's being published by Trust Games and it's designed by Sean Lee. Now this is a cyberpunk future game and so in order to talk about this I have found someone from a cyberpunk dystopian future to tell us all about the game. Uh, let me send it over to Exalted. I am Exalted. Crash like you find him in our existence until now. But I can rebel for a few. In Cyprus, the old hearts of Stratos look down on those in the underbelly. I'm not even terminating any that people who gets in your way. If you can get enough bubble, I'm a strong hypothesis going. You might make it up to the waste streams. Make a chiz life for yourself. Wow, to be honest, I only really caught and understood about half the words you said. So I'll just tell people about the theme. So in this game, you play a member of a faction that is living in the underbelly of this city. Now, up above you is the city of Stratus. It's like this big tower of a city where the more money you have, the farther up you are on it. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to secure your place in the upper city and show the people above you that you don't belong in a place where you're looked down on. You don't belong below them. You belong amongst them. And so to do this, you are going to gather resources. You're going to send your crew out to do missions. You're also going to gain control of the waste pipes that lead down from the city of Stratus so that you can take your people up there and claim your rightful spot in the city above. So that being said, let me send you to our gameplay overview. I hope that interview was, um, I hope it made some sense to some of you. I don't really know. Uh, I do want to preface this whole thing by saying that while we were uh, shipped a copy of the game to review, I didn't get to keep it. It's on its way to another reviewer, and um, this is not a paid uh, video whatsoever. So our opinions are exactly as we say they are, in case you're worried about that. We're integrity. <laughs> this stands for integrity. Anyway, onward. So in this game, basically you're trying to be the one with the most victory points at the end, but there's a lot of different things that can give you victory points. So each turn uh, is played out in four phases. The first phase everyone does simultaneously, and basically what you do in that phase is you look at your the yellow section of your board and see what symbols there are there based on what you started with or what cards you've added to your life path by doing missions. And whatever symbols you have there, you're going to get that much of each of those resources. So if you have like, mm -hmm. you know, two credits and like one weapon, that's what you're going to get at the beginning in that first phase of the turn. Uh, and that, of course, like I mentioned, can change throughout the game as you do more missions. If you choose to focus on that to get that steady income every turn, not a bad way to go. In the second phase, uh, you place your character token in one of the districts and you get basically a bonus of resources for that district. So it might be currency, it might be tech, it might be weapons. And then in that blue section, as you collect blue cards, if an opposing player places their character on that district and you have that district represented in the blue section, then you get a resource for for that as well, depending on how many of those icons that you have. Yeah, it's a really nice way to profit off of what someone else is doing. Mm -hmm. And can make them kind of second guess if they want to mm -hmm. go to a, a district or not. Oh, it made me so mad. I kept needing to go <laughs> places and she had like a million symbols and I was like, oh, she focused on that so well. <laughs> Ugh, anyway, but it's, it's, it's a nice thing to do. And again, those cards are added to your life path. It's all called the life path when it branches off from your, your character card where you're adding these cards to symbols. Um, you do that by completing missions, which we'll go about in the uh, next little section here. Because in the third part of the round, you're going to send your crew out, which is represented by little uh, car standees. And the spaces for the cars, any number of them can go to in each district or each special spot. Like there's no, there's no limit there whatsoever. But you do have to be able to afford to do whatever that space lets you do. So for the missions, you definitely have to pay some sort of a, of a cost. And you can lessen that if you have a lot of symbols in the orange part of your life path. Because if you have 
say, two of the uh, the yellow symbol in that part of your life path, and you move your vehicle to le- the yellow area, doing a mission there is going to cost you two less because you have those two symbols. You can also lessen it by completing your skills. Mm-hmm. And you do that by the missions that you get. They'll have a skill and a, a affiliated gang. I wanted to say bounties because that's another part of it, too. <laughs> yeah. When you collect enough to complete your skill, then you'll grab a... T- token from the skill section um, and it'll like the skill you get three random skill cards and each card has two sides on it so there's two different skills that you can kind of choose from so once you complete it then when you grab the token it's double-sided so depending on which side of the the skill is on the card you would cover up the other side so that you complete the picture and then you have that skill and that normally lessens the cost to do a mission as well. Yeah, it's a really nice way to to boost up your, um, or to help your personal economy, I guess, in a sense. And then also gives you something to shoot for in the game and, and to structure your choices a little more, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice. When you do finish uh, a mission, so you take that card, you put it in your life path, depending on what color it was, and then you're going to take one of your colored cubes and you're going to place it on a spot on the, like, the hex board that, uh, that matches the color of the mission you went on. So if it's a, in the orange area, you're going to put on an orange spot. So we'll come back to what those cubes are going to help you do in just a second. So there are other spots on the board that aren't missions. So for instance, there is a merchant that will let you exchange resources. So if you have some of the uh, the pink cards in your life path, and you have, let's say, two of the blue symbol, that means that whatever... I don't remember the exact um, thing you could trade in to get to turn them into the the blue symbol. But when you turn one of those, you'll get two blue back. So it it helps to boost those up if you don't mind traveling to the merchant several times because it's a way to really boost your currency. I was trying to do that a lot last time. It did not get me the win. And there's a lot of different ways to to play this game. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I did did a trade at the market at all when we played. So there's... You don't have to do every single part of the game in order to be able to play it well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it might be better to, I'm not sure, but it might be better to not uh, try to spread out and do every single thing. I'm not sure. But there's also an area down at that part of the board where you can get a loan. And basically, it'll just say you get this many credits, but it has a thing at the end of the game. If you haven't paid it back, then you lose a certain amount of victory points. So good way to get credits right away if you need it for something, but uh, you don't want to be stuck with those cards at the end of the game if you can avoid it. There's also the bounties, which is the other, uh, the fashions I was talking about on the mission card. Mm -hmm. So when you collect three of those, you can collect a bounty. And when you collect a bounty, it increases the cost of a mission that's related to them. Mm -hmm. So um, the timing of collecting those bounties can be... You want to kind of play that out, so you might not want to necessarily collect that bounty as soon as you get the cards that you need in order to do it. Yeah, and those bounties do give you victory points at the end of the game, and you can actually, uh, I believe it's always like three of like a certain gang every time you collect a bounty, but if you wanted to, like if you did all your missions against the Hula Gang, you could keep collecting a bounty on them over and over again, but that's going to make the cost of going to that orange area possibly kind of ridiculous at some point but it's kind of a neat option and it's interesting how it affects the game so then at the very top of the board is is maybe a couple of your most important spots because this is going to be where you're going to get probably the bulk of your victory points at the end of the game and this is building uh this lets you build the tubes on the board that leads you up. It's like the waste shaft, which sounds kind of gross, but <laughs> leads you up to I like to um, imagine stratus. we're climbing on the outside of it god i hope that's what it is <laughs> Because can you imagine you're going to this nice city and you suddenly just climb out a tube and you're covered with God knows what and you'll be like, I'm going to fit in here with the rich people. I don't think you will. (laughs) But anyway, uh, yeah, outside, you know, I hadn't even thought about the outside of the tube. I'm glad I'm not in charge of doing this kind of mission because it would not be pleasant for anyone. Anyway, so these are, there's two spots. They both will let you build uh, the tubes either at um, one at height of one, two, or three, depending on how much how, or how many resources you spend. One of the spots will let you spend any combination of resources up to, you know, whatever the number is that you have to spend to make your your tube. The other one is going to be associated with some cards that are on top of the the, the lowest level of the, the stratus board. And basically, you could still build tubes there, but you're going to be doing it for specific people, and they want you to build on a certain colored hex, and they want you to use only a particular resource to do it. But if you do it that way, even though it's much harder, you then get to take that 
that uh, car and do another move with it later. So it kind of gives you an extra space if you can pull that off. It's just trickier to do so. And when you build your tubes, you have to build it on a spot where you have a cube. And so you'll put that there whatever height you do and then move the cube to whatever height matches the height of the cube. So if you did, or tube, excuse me. So if you did a too high tube, then you put it on the second spot. Um, you would then, if you're one of the first people there, you get some resources back. It's kind of like an early bird reward. Uh, uh, if not, your cube's still up there and all these spaces are worth a different amount of point at the end of the game. Obviously, the higher you go, the better uh, your score will be for that. So then with the fourth section, um, that's kind of when you're pulling all your people back and reloading for the next round. Yeah, and that's also like, that is the phase that you, if you took out a debt, you could pay it back at that point. If you wanted to, you don't have to. You could leave that, like I said, to the end of the game if you want. Don't recommend it, but you can definitely do that. And that's also when the game will end. So if you, uh, the way the game ends is, depending on how many players you have, once all those tubes are used up and built, uh, that will signal like the, the beginning of the end game, but it won't end until actually the end of that round. And you can still build tubes after that. There's some extras so that if you are able to build something in the last round, even if somebody else has pulled the last uh, tube that you had separated out, you could still build one at that point. And then uh, after that, once you've gone through all the rounds, if all the tubes are built, you go through the scoring. So you're going to get points based on cubes you have on which on various levels of stratus. And then the thing with the tubes that's kind of interesting is you get points based on which tubes you have control of. Mm -hmm. So that means if you have the most of your color cubes uh, adjacent to a certain tube, you will get points for that. Even if you didn't build that tube, if, if she built the tube and I managed to get one more cube than she had around that, then I'll get the points for it. So you have to be really careful and strategic yeah. about where you're placing those. Because otherwise it can kind of backfire for you in the end. Uh, that's also when, of course, you'll score your bounties. And you also get some points based on the resources that you have still uh, in your possession. If you have any debts, you'll deduct some yeah. points. Um, but I think that's all the scoring. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's the basic gist of how the game is played. So we'll move on to art. I really enjoy the artwork in this. It's kind of a modern American anime style. So it's not, not fully anime, but it's a little bit more than like a normal American cartoon or even like a comic book style. I, I really enjoy it. Um, I think they did a good job of really making the different districts distinct looking. So, you know, like it, you don't have that confusion of like, is this a spot or is this not a spot? And I think they did a good job of like really making like the underworld where you're mainly playing feel like it's kind of like dirty, grungy, and then the city's really nice and pristine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so kind of like you were saying, I think the art is is very much like a like a modern kind of animation style. It reminds me if any of you have seen the show Arcane on Netflix. Kind of similar to that. It's it's sort of anime and sort of not. It kind of reminds me of the new She-Ra. I could kind of see that. I could kind of see that too. It's 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 an interesting look, but I really really like it. I think the characters all look really cool on there. And like you were saying, they they were really smart in that they didn't clutter up the spaces that you're supposed to land on with art. You know, those are very distinct from mm -hmm. the art that's around it, and that really helps. It's you know, we definitely have some games where uh, you look on the board and the board looks beautiful. But figuring out what all the different spaces are can be a little bit of a headache, and that is not an issue with this game at all. Uh, also, I mean, I really like the look of the specific characters you play as. I mean, I feel like, I don't know, like some of like, there's not massive differences in how they are at the beginning, but some of them I want to play just because they look a little cooler mm -hmm. for some reason. <laughs> like, I look, yeah, I picked my character off of looks re really good. Yeah. There wasn't, there's not a huge difference. The, the player boards do, we'll go into a little bit more in components, but the player boards do have, um, are double-sided, but it's the same character, so. Yeah, yeah, they have just little slightly different uh, starting things when you flip them over, but other than that, yeah. It, it, I think the book says you're supposed to pick randomly, but um, we didn't do that. Well, I think I picked mine randomly and you didn't, but that's whatever, it doesn't really matter, so either way, it works out well. So components, it's sort of a weird one to talk about when we're talking about something that's just hitting Kickstarter because they still have time if they wanted to to change these in, in any way, shape, or form. So we can kind of tell you about how it looks so far and where we think it's it's going. Uh, I'm really happy with these components, to be honest with you. Um, I think I think they're really great. The one thing that may be a concern but also might not be is, is I'm hoping that that City of Stratus, that tower that you build up, is sturdy enough to handle being taken apart and put back together 
uh, for multiple uses. That being said, though, like there's not a lot of heavy things going mm -hmm. on to it. It's just cards and then the little tiny plastic cubes. So it doesn't have to hold like models or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, besides the t taking it apart and putting it back together, it, it doesn't have a lot of wear and tear on during the game. Yeah, so. agreed, agreed. Although I wouldn't mind if they use models in this game. But uh, the standees actually are, are perfectly fine. They're mm -hmm. really cool. Uh, no issue with them whatsoever. Um, pretty sturdy as they are. I really like the the segmented board. It's all in like these various pieces based on the um, the districts of the, the, the Undercity there. <laughs> and sometimes I don't like that in a game. Like sometimes it's kind of a pain in the butt, and I just wish I could just unfold a board and be done with it. But... I don't know why, like, I just really like it. I think it fits together really cool. I think it looks really striking, putting it on your table and having it, you know, have the space in between, like, those areas on the side and your, your hex board in the middle. Uh, you know, I like that. It lets it scale better because yeah. you can you can flip over those boards depending on the amount of players you have, and then you'll use more of the hex board pieces also depending on the number of players you have. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's really cool how they design this this board it also helps you like really distinguish which districts are which and like you know i'm going to this area and or this area it it doesn't have that bleeding together where it's like oh like i'm not sure which area i'm going to so yeah the, the cards they use i'm wondering if this is going to be how it is in the, in the final product or not i'm not sure because they're they don't feel like normal cards they, they feel like a, a thicker or stiffer card stock than what you typically find, which is... And they have a little bit of a texture on them, yeah. so... And that's neither positive or negative. I, either way they go with it, it's fine. It's a little tougher, I guess, to, to shuffle them as they are, but not... I mean, it's nothing... It's not really anything I have any serious complaint about and either And it's not a deck builder, so you're yeah. not, like, shuffling it all the time. No, you're really not. So it, would, it wouldn't be a huge issue either way, but, you know, again, that may be... Uh, uh, review copy that's like that it may or may not be that way in the end but honestly if it came out and it was how it is in the copy that we played i would be perfectly happy with it yeah i really like the components um i think the one area that i would probably change on it is the mission cards one i would make them a little bit smaller a little, or at least narrower because if you're collecting a lot of them it that lifeline can go out quite a bit and because you have not only the resources on those cards, but you also have the skills and the gangs that you have to look at. You can't really like overlap the cards very easily. So, cause like the gangs are on one side and the um, yeah, that's true. That's... skills are on the other side. So you can't really overlap the, overlap the cards to kind of scrunch it, scrunch them up. So either having it so, set up so that they're all on one side, so you can overlap them or just mm. making the cards smaller, a little narrower so that if you get a long run, it's mm. a little easier to manage. <clears throat> that is one thing that I, I did have a little bit of trouble with. It's not a huge deal, but like tracking which uh, which gangs or factions you've done missions against and which skills you've done you've uh, used for your missions, it can be a little crazy because you can start having them like all over the place. And I think it's it could be a little easy to miss that you could upgrade your skill or you mm -hmm. could get your uh, or get another bounty if you wanted to. Uh, I kind of almost wish that they would take those off there entirely. And and as much as I I don't necessarily want a, a separate board, have like some kind of a little tracker where you can be like. I've done this many missions against the Hula Gang, and I've done this many of this skill or something. I don't know. So some way to make it a little easier to spot it. Or even if, you know, if they stuck that symbol, like, on, for those on, like, close to one side of the card, and then just had those things listed on that same side mm -hmm. so you could overlap them to shrink it up. Because if you, you know, go heavy and getting that guaranteed income with the, with the yellow cards, like, you can have a big long, which is a nice, easy way to do things. You can have a big, long strip of this yellow and, yeah. and um, Granted, you could just, I mean, you could work with that, but it does take up some room if you go that route. Mm -hmm. For the theme, I think they did a pretty good job of incorporating the theme with the game. Um, like I said, with the artwork, you do get that feeling of the, the underworld versus the high class city. Where it kind of distracts from the theme a little bit to me is kind of going back to the mission card. The districts are kind of represented by different gangs, but then. You can have a hooligan gang that is represented by orange, but you can still get a mission in the blue that's hooligan gang. So, like, even if they, like, maybe that would be a 
way way to kind of with so much on the cards all if the hooligan gang missions were all like the orange or you know something along those lines because it's like the districts are separated out by the gangs but then you get the mission but the missions you can get from any of the spots can have any of the gangs affiliated with it so um and then uh, kind of along the same lines when you're collecting those bounties, you can collect bounties on your own gang, mm-hmm. which seems a little weird. Yeah, because each of your starting characters has, has like a little tiny bit of backstory where they're like, oh, you're with you know these people. And you can still absolutely collect bounties on that same group. Like I, I think it, it alters what you have in your little starting card by a little bit. It's not a massive mm-hmm. chain from one to the next. Um, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't go as far as call it like a variable player power kind of no. thing. It's just like, oh, well, because it, It's I'm, so easy to overcome what yeah. you start with. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's nothing to keep you, I guess, staying with the side of the, the faction that your character is from at all. It's really just kind of like a way, I think, to justify, like, well, here's why you start with this thing and not something else, which is fine. It doesn't really bother me, but it does kind of mess with the theme a little bit. It's it's sort of strange that, uh, that you can do that. Um, I... You know, I um, I kind of realized with this game, I don't know that we really have another like really like hard cyberpunk kind of themed game. Like, yeah, I think the closest we have is the um, twisted, twisted fables, twisted fables. Yeah, it's like a cyberpunk fairy tale. Yeah, but even that, like, it's like the game itself. I guess it doesn't feel like it brings like a cyberpunk like theme to it as much. I mean, the characters have that backstory, but like, you know, it's it's just like a fighting game. This one. I can I can really see more of that world and like okay you're trying to like you know better your situation and you're going up against the super rich people who are keeping everybody down and that all seems real super cyberpunky to me so I really I really like that I really think they incorporated that that theme really well I do think it's kind of strange that the missions you go on there'll be things like you know abduct or terminate all this kind of vicious stuff yeah but you don't really feel like you're doing that I mean doing one mission feels the same as doing another mission whatever it is and for all that you can are willing to go out and kill people like there's no way to take someone else's cubes off the board like you can't like assassinate their people over there at all which i'm kind of glad because i don't think the game needs that i don't know that i'd want that in the game but it is sort of strange that like we're apparently pretty happy to be violent people but we're not gonna like take out your guys over there around that tube even though it sure help us out a lot like it seems like you would yeah. So that's a little bit of a, a, a dissonance from the theme, but I that's kind of goes along with the um, missions in the district in the districts too, because like the hooligan gang, the orange district is where you get weapons and stuff like that. But like you can do it, you could do like a tech skill uh, mission yeah. there. So that's kind of another one that's a little disconnected with. Um, I was like, I'm glad that. I can do any of the missions and any of the gangs in any of the districts. But as far as the theme, tying that in with the theme, it kind of muddies it up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, like overall, I, I'd say they, I say the, the theme is, is pretty well integrated. There's a couple things that you just kind of have to hand wave away and be like, well, it makes the game better to not stick too hard to yeah. this particular thing. So I haven't done a lot of these Kickstarter reviews yet, but every time I have this time in the one previous time. Um, I get a little nervous about it actually because uh, I I'm worried that I won't like the game, and I feel a little bad if that were to happen because you know these people are trying to get their project off the ground. You know they want people to like it and be excited about it, and there's always that chance that I'm going to get something and be like, oh, oh no, you know, uh, and I'd have to say so if that was the case. But luckily, that is not the case here. This game. I was for days and days thinking of it as an engine builder. Like that was the only thing that went in my head. And that is a huge part of the game because you are affecting how much you spend and how much you get and all kinds of stuff. Um, And you're doing it all to get points at the end. But literally the same day we started recording, I was, I kind of realized like, Oh wait, there's also worker placement and there's also area control. But these three mechanisms, and there's probably more that I'm, totally forgetting right now. I guess you're kind of building a tableau too. Anyway, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of mechanisms. They're so seamlessly blended together, in my opinion, that you, you don't even think mechanisms that much anymore. At least I didn't like, I got so wrapped up in this and just, and trying to figure out how to better my situation that I wasn't thinking like, Oh, it's worker placement time. It's t-, you know, I, I just didn't, I felt like 
they did such a great job because we certainly played games that bring in a lot of different mechanisms that all work well, but they don't necessarily blend together that great. Like you feel like you're doing very separate things and that, that can be fine. But when I think of those games compared to this one and how well integrated it is, it really impresses me a lot. I knew very little about this game uh, when I agreed to do a review. I'd seen some of the ads and I thought it looked kind of cool and I was definitely planning to check it out, but I didn't know too much about it. And to be honest, I'm pretty blown away with it. Now, because we're doing a review on a Kickstarter game that you know is not in its final form, we don't want to do a number score because things can change. It, you know, it may or may not necessarily be fair, depending. Uh, but I will say this for sure. When this hits Kickstarter, I definitely want to back it. It's really, really good. If there is justice in this world, this game will not only fund, but a lot of people will discover it and get into their hands, and you will not be able to avoid hearing about this game. I really think it's that good. I am super excited to have a copy of it again whenever that happens. I don't know how long the Kickstarter is going to be or how long it's going to take for them to produce. I don't know. I just know that whenever that happens and that box gets in my hands again, I'm going to be, I'm going to hug it. <laughs> I'm going to cry some tears of joy. Not onto the box. I don't want to ruin it. And then I'm going to play the game again and I'm going to be very, very happy because I really do like it that much. I cannot tell you how much I love how blended together everything is and the theme and everything. Uh, it just makes me very happy. I want it now. <laughs> but it's it's gone. So, like I said, we're going off of Kickstarter here. So, you know, instead of doing our usual scoring, we're going off of whether or not we would back this game on Kickstarter. I really enjoyed playing this game. I, th I had a lot of fun. There, it, It's a little bit of a heavier game. There's a lot to keep track of. And I meant especially once you, because like once you start getting the skills and the bounties and you're adding and subtracting and it's not necessarily a straight across the board, it's going to cost me this much every time. So there is a lot to keep track of and kind of doing, having to do some math and, you know, it can start getting a little bit overwhelming, but it's also not a super long game. So it's, you know, I don't know if this is a game that I would want to play like back to back because it does start to kind of fry my brain a little bit after a little while, <laughs> but, it, but it was a really fun game. So um, I would back this game. So I'm excited to see what the final product actually is when it comes out. Absolutely. Well, that's pretty good. It has uh, both of our endorsement. We both liked it a lot. And I see that as absolute permission. Go ahead, Dave. Back it, she said, without saying those words. <laughs> Tell me I can back it without telling me I can back it. That's basically <laughs> what just happened. Anyway, um, I'm excited to see it, too. I hope that, uh, that you all check it out and see what you think. But uh, I think it's a winner for sure. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can know about the next time we put out a video. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. Bye. You'll get uh, a weapon. Uh, you get uh, one of the real weapons. God damn it. <laughs> That's all, folks. All right. Uh, so, <sighs> yep. There are, um, oh, oh, also when you, <laughs> okay. if you like that video, wait, that sounded really cheesy. If you like that video. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, if you could help us out, if you know. <laughs> See you around the table. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what? I know we're bye. <laughs> we're great. If you enjoyed that video, you might want to... <laughs> I hate everything. Okay. If you enjoyed that video, you should check out this one. Or this one. And if you really want to help us out, hit this button to subscribe and check out our older videos as well as all the future ones to come. See you around the table. Bye. bye.